to our bodies, we're going to work into our voices, and afterwards we're going to work into our body language. It's going to be very interactive. Come along with me and accompany me in this. That's a great complication. I think that down, that's splendid. Just come and join us. So we're going to shake our legs. So we shake the legs. Oh, that's great. Terrific. You're going to feel this wonderful You're going to feel as if you're walking on air. It's wonderful. Have a mouth. Just come and join us as you're ready, OK? Great, and the other arm, terrific. And a leg and an arm. And the other leg and the arm. And the other leg. That's great. And I've brought our shoulders back and then forwards. Back and then forwards. Terrific. That's a nice one. Great, you're going to let your head go. It's the heaviest part of your body. Let your head go. Terrific. Just drop down. That's great. Breathe out. Breathe out. And turn yourself into a real rag doll. Go really floppy. And then all that stress and all that tension out. You've got to the workshop today. That's splendid. You don't stay down there until I tell you to come back. Oh, right. And then when I tell you to very slowly, just going to come back up right and take this very slow breath in. Nice and slow. That's terrific. Let's do it again. Let's let the breath out. Let the head go, let the body go, just take all the tension out. That's terrific. Well done. Gently come back in your own time. Just gently, no rapid movements, gently. That's great. The reason we have this wonderful large space is because now you are going on the floor. Okay. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. Everybody on the floor, please. Find a nice space next to us comfortable. That's great. There's lots of space still over here, so if you have to be some more crowded into one area. Lovely. And if you can just help you lie yourself down on your back. Isn't it wonderful? You'll feel as if you're back in bed again. It's Saturday morning. That's why people like my workshops. It's also relaxing. Right, lovely. So, splendid. So, what we're going to do is we're going to find a good breath. And when you start out as a little baby, you have excellent, excellent coordination of your breathing. Think of the baby lying there. And you know, a baby can cry and scream for hours and hours lying on its back, simply because it's got really good use of its breathing muscles. It never tires. I want you to feel, just on your tummy level, front, bottom of your, of your rib cage, you have your diaphragmatic muscle. I'm going to walk around so you can see. Just put a, just put a hand there for a start so you know where we are. That's good. Breathe out. Always breathe out before you breathe in, otherwise you're in trouble. <laughs> Splendid. Oh, great. Wonderful. Great. So I want you to take your breath, just feeling that you're going to move this front part of the earth the diaphragmatic muscle. Here we come. One, two, three. Just breathe. You take the air in through the nose and the mouth, if you like. Chair is comfy to you. Great, let the breath go. The next place I want you to feel the breath is on your lower rib cage. Just, if you can, just place a, maybe a thumb on your lower ribs. Can you see? Make sure you can see. That's it, splendid. Commissioner Governor Paul has gone off to sleep. That's wonderful. It's there. Thank you. Great. Now just breathe and just feel that at that level of the ribs. So you have the front and you have the side. That's great. But the really nice, springy, supporty breath that we need to support our speaking voices on happens when you also breathe into your back. So let's try and get the breath all the way around now. Breathe out. With a calm hand. Breathe. And feel just an opening at the back ribs as you're lying on the floor. It's not very much, but it's just a nice feeling opening. That's great. Splendid. And let's let the breath out. Good. We're going to start to make sounds now. We're going to feel our vocal cords coming into action. So you can take a breath and just go <coughs> Try it. <coughs> you can do it on a note if you like. That's lovely. What that does is it helps to bring your vocal bones and vocal cords together. <coughs> so they're ready and active for what we call phonation, for speaking. Try again. Breathe out, breathe in, nicely into the back there, 
and splendid, excellent, come make yourself comfortable guys, that's lovely, and now try me, me, mo. Breathing with it, breathe in. Me, me, mo. Me, me, mo. Breathe out. Me, mo, ma. Me, mo, ma. Me, me, mo. Me, me, mo. Isn't it nice to be down on the floor making sounds? How splendid. Now you have the right to just gently come back into the sitting position. Take your time. No brush movements, all nice and comfortable. That's splendid. That's great. And now let's come back into the upright position. Let's stand up. Yes. Wonderful. I want you to screw your face up into a ball. Come on, give me the worst face you can possibly imagine. It's what they call gurning, don't they? Gurning, come on. See some faces well. That's great. Why don't you put your face all screwed up? I would like you to release it slowly, muscle by muscle, so very slowly, no sort of that. Okay? Just very slowly. Screw your face up, tight back ball. Excellent. Release muscle by muscle. Spot on. That's good. That's good. Try again. One more time. Excellent. As well. Yeah, and release it muscle by muscle. Start to wake your face up a little bit. That's looking very really good. Excellent. Now we're going to blow your lips out. It was a really cold day. That's it. Good. How about getting some of that nice feel of the breath support that we had on the floor behind this blowing out the lips? It really helps you to make the connection. Nice loose shoulders, relaxed shoulders. You try again. That's great, splendid. And now I'm going to let you all have a big treat. You can stick out your tongue. And you can work your tongue. Left and right, up and down. Dare to do it, dare to stick out your tongue. I know it's terribly rude, but there you are. Third, we're just loosening the tongue. That's great. You see, it's actually the, um, the base of the tongue that's attached to all those cartilages that help to protect and move your vocal folds, and, that, folds, and that's why we do this. Try again. Good. A little bit of a tongue twister for you then. Red lolly. Red lolly. Yellow lorry. Yellow lorry. Red lolly. Yellow lorry. Try again. Red lolly. Yellow lorry. You'll get there, don't worry. Red lolly. Yellow lorry. Try again. Red lolly. Yellow lorry. Red lolly. Yellow lorry. Red lolly. Yellow lorry. Great, tongues are nice and loose now. That's splendid. <coughs> so, let's have a little rhyme. You follow after me, okay? Does the man in the moon like music? Does the man in the moon like music? Does he toot along his flute or does he croon? Does he toot along his flute or does he croon? Does he slip in something lunar in the way he plays his tune? Does he sit in something lunar in the way he plays his tune? Or does he simply sit and doodle on the moon? Or does he simply sit and doodle on the moon? Now as we're doing that exercise, because we've warmed up the breath and we've got everything working together in our bodies, you'll start to feel a nice, sympathetic, resonant feel to your voice. When you're giving your speeches, never feel that you have to push your voice out into the room to create volume, but rather draw the voice in to get the resonance which will help the sound to project right to the back of the room. You never force the voice out, you draw it in and you use the resonance. And that's the way that our voices project decently into a room. Let's do the man in the moon. And I'm fed up with seeing you standing on the spot, so you can follow me around and have a little wander. Look at people as you're going around, so my contact would be very nice. We'd like to be in contact with each other, say, can you go? Does the man in the moon like music? Does the man in the moon like music? Does he chew along his flute or does he groom? Does he chew along his flute or does he groom? Does he slip in something lunar? Does he slip in something lunar? Does he slip in something lunar? You have to wait for me to say it first because otherwise you're not going to Let's do that again. You again. 
does he slip in something lunar in the way he plays his tune? Does he slip in something lunar in the way he plays his tune? Or does he simply sit and doodle on the moon? Or does he simply sit and doodle on the moon? That's great. We're going to start to move now into the body language part of this section. And I would like you to find a partner. And what you're going to do is to imitate their body language. So if I take you, you can work with me. Great. Will you volunteer your round of applause? Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Thank you, Will you volunteer. So you just copy me, okay? The problem with gestures is that most people either make them too big or too small to register in the room. And just by copying this kind of exercise, you get the right level of gesture. So I would like you to find a partner and gesture away. Okay, we'll give one minute to the first person to gesture. Well done, thank you. Just find a partner, come on, Polly. Okay, the page cycle is starting. Instructions. That's great. I would like you, I think we can maybe be in groups of five. Can you get yourselves into groups of five, please? old-fashioned Toastmasters formula, which is the table topic. And we are going to do table topics without speaking. Oh. That means that you will be given the subject and you will simply have to perform the table topic. It will only work if you think of the words in your head as you're doing the table topic. I do not want a mind show, okay? Too easy to do a mind show. Think the words of your topic in your head and then, okay, you can just experience the use of gesture without needing the words. So there are five topics. It will go in one, two, three, four, five in the circle. Once the person has done their table topics, the rest of you will have 20 seconds to give them a commend, a recommend, and a commend on their body language. Okay? So decide which way again. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah? One, two, three, four, five. 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 Spend is everybody listening because you need me. Right. You only have to do your table topic for 40 seconds because this is quite difficult without words. So number ones. The title for your table topic is My Greatest Fight. That should get some body language out of you. Here we go, number one. You have 40 seconds to do My Greatest Fight. Everybody else is observing. Ready with the recommendations. Off you go. My Greatest Fight.
could you give your recommend, recommend, command for the person's body language, please? Not <laughs> <laughs> this person, if you just put in your group, why don't you say something? Sort of Right. Number two, you are going to do Dancing with the Stars. Dancing with the Stars is starting with please. That's it. Could I have a trip? Men, 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 Your topic is bouncing on the moon. 
Remember, you're supposed to be thinking of the words as you do your table topic. You know you're speaking. without speaking, I don't know what you're doing. Quite a splendid thing. Right, we've got some new folks. Do come and join the group now. And you're going to do another exercise for the voice. <coughs> so, you follow me, let's use the space. What should you do to die today? What should what you, what you do, do to die today? At a quarter to two to two. At a quarter to two to two. A thing that's very hard to say. A thing that's very hard to say. But harder still to do. There'll be a to two and a quarter to two. There'll be a to two and a quarter to two. A rat a tat tat to two to two. A rat a tat tat to two to two. And the dragon will come when he hears the drum. And the dragon will come when he hears the drum. At a quarter to two to two today. At a quarter to two to two today. At a quarter to two to two. At a quarter to two to two. It's not bad. It's some. Freedom and flexibility in the arms. We all tend to talk around in a little circle. You know, you like and lots of eye contact. Let's make this fun. Come on. Here we go. What to do to die today? What to do to die today? What to do to do to do? A thing that's very hard to say. A thing that's very hard to say. But hard is still to do. But hard is still to do. There'll be a to two and a quarter to two. There'll be a to two and a quarter to two. A rat tat 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 to two to two. A rat tat 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 to two to two. And the dragon will come when he hears the drum. And the dragon will come when he hears the drum. At a quarter to two to two today. At a quarter to two to two today. At a quarter to two to two. At a quarter to two to two. Good. We're going to do a meal. We're going to do breakfast because that's not very far away. Turn to the person on your right. And I wish you to say to them, a glass of orange juice, very sexily. Here we go. Orange juice sexily, please. You Thank you. 
speeches, it's quite all right to take a passage of your speech and just say it in a different type of tone of voice. We're going to open up the whole spectrum of your voice by doing this. So just try to experiment with vocal variety. Take a phrase of your speech and maybe say it angrily or laughter or whatever way you like. It's quite possible to work on your vocal variety this way. Right, next thing we're going to do together is, you will see that on the tables, you have a verse of a poem. Now, I wasn't quite sure how many were coming. We may have to share a little bit. Keep, can you go back into your groups of five? I think it's the easiest way. Go and find your group of five. And will one person from each group of five come to the table and collect some papers? We'll see that each group has a paper. Excellent. Does everybody have some sheets? There's some more here. Now, this is a verse of a poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson. And what I would like is for each group to prepare it. Okay, for each group to prepare it. You can give each other individual words if you like, or individual phrases. I'd like you to prepare it with words and with body language. If you want one person to be responsible, or two can be responsible for reading, or you can share up the words. It's up to you how you take this verse of poem and integrate into it a little vocal variety, some gesture, some body language, okay? And use some of these voice techniques we're working on this morning. I'm going to give you five minutes, and then we're all going to come back together and see what you've done. Okay? And who will deliver that line? It can be if you wish, or you can send it. Yeah. I'm just going to do it. Yeah.
Okay, folks, that's it. So, if you're all ready, we're going to start, we're going to start with this group here. We're going to go in this direction. So, we'll start with this group here. Group number one, would you like to present your tennis and twist number one? Be nice and quiet. And please make sure you remember our name. Our name. Here we go. Splendor failed on Castle Wall. Oh, the long light shakes across the lakes. And the wild cataract leaps in glory. <laughs> blow, bugle, blow, set the wild echoes flying. Blow, bugle, answer, echoes dying. The splendour falls on castle walls. And snowy summits, oh, in story. The long light shakes across the lakes. And the wide cataract leaps in glory. Blow, bugle, blow. Set the wild echoes flying. Blow, blow bugle. bugle. Answer, echoes, dying, dying, dying. Well done. <laughs> bonus point, number, two, number two, bonus point for all that memory work. Very quickly done there. Very good. Number three, please. Do feel free to use the space and don't feel you have to stand in the spot. Which way? Splendor, full, on, warm, and snowy, summits, old, in story, With long, light shapes, across, the lakes, and the, wild, cataract leap, in glory, blow, bugle, set the wild, Flying, blow. Boogle, boogle. <laughs> Answer. Echoes. Dying, dying, dying. Well done. <laughs> The long light shakes across the lakes. And wild cataract leaps in glory. Blow, bugle, blow. Set the wild echoes flying. Blow, bugle, answer, echo. <laughs> the splendour falls on castle walls. The slowy summit, oh, in the story. The long light shakes across the lakes. And the wild cataract leaps in glory. Blow, bugle, blow, said the wow echoes flying. Blow, bugle. Answer, echo. Die, 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 die. die. The splendor falls in castle walls, snowy summits, old story. The long life shakes and 
across the lakes. And the wild cataract lives in glory. Blow, bugle, blow. Set the wild echoes flying. Blow, bugle, answer, echo, echo, echo. Dying, dying, dying. <laughs> Melodramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent work, everybody. So, what I wanted to do to round up today was to allow you a couple of moments to ask me some questions if you have any questions. I also want to really encourage you, as you do your Toastmasters program, to take a look at those interpretive reading manuals and storytelling manuals that come up once you've completed your CC. You'll be into the advanced work, and I really encourage you to take them. It's my opinion in general, being around the clubs an awful lot and seeing some splendid stuff in competition as well, but it's my opinion that we could all do a lot more in terms of opening up, in terms of gesture, and in terms of really using our voice as well. Did you have any questions? Anyone got anything they would like to, to say? Have you enjoyed it? Yes! yes. <laughs> My favourite book of exercise, I don't know, I think I, I like a series of exercises. I don't say there's one. I mean, I, I do enjoy Ratata 2. Ratata 2 you'll find in a lot of my workshops because it's just such fun because of the combination of consonants and the vowels. And it keeps things nice and balanced and it gets people moving freely. So I do like that one particularly. But no, what I like is a real sequence. And what I have for you today actually is a paper which is a little reminder of what we've done in the session. And it gives you the sequence of the exercises. So if you're mad enough, you can try this out at home. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Invite your neighbours! Invite your neighbours. <laughs> Bring to Toastmasters. Yes. Yes. Andrew, can I ask, I tend to stand very still and use no gestures. Mm -hmm. How do you make that sort of link to sort of freeing yourself up to be able yeah. to, to move around? Okay, well I think the first thing is obviously to free your, up, your body up before you start to go into your speech. It's very easy to get rooted. It can be good in certain speech contests. We like to be nicely rooted to the spot. It's okay. But I do think that really the gesture and the movement comes as a response from being inside what you're saying. It's very easy to give a double message to your audience. You're saying one thing, but your body language is saying something totally different. And I'd love us to be able together, and we'll work together in Toastmasters, to eradicate that in Toastmasters. That when people come to us, they learn how to make their body language and gesture match up with what they're actually trying to say and with the message. If you work from inside the word, from inside the message, you'll find the right gestures, and normally they'll be of the right size. Anyone else? One more. I understand the concept of feeling the fear and doing it anyway, but when one talks in public, um, is there a way to not feel the fear? What I'm trying to say is, as a person gains confidence, like you yourself, if you keep talking, is there ever a time that you still feel the fear? Always. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd be absolutely no good as public speakers if we didn't have that little bit of buzz of nerves. I'm really all in favour of butterflies. The main thing is that the nerves have to work for you. And if you're energised and you're into your message, then the nerves will not be a problem. And the more experience, as you said, the more experience that you have on stage, the more control you have over that situation, the more feeling of time. Have you felt that? The more you progress in your speeches, the more feeling of time you have on stage, you're not rushed. Well, I think that you, know, you can make your nerves work for you. So use your energy. Yes, one more. Um, and then we'll go down. What can you do to project your voice? To project the voice? Um, yeah. Projection of the voice is a very bizarre sort of concept. But in, in a nutshell, what I was working on with you this, evening, this afternoon was getting to you, you to resonate with your voice. Using the whole of the body. The voice isn't just here, trapped in a knot. It's the whole of your body that creates the voice. And you're going for a nice resonant sound. And when you have the resonant sound, your voice will carry and travel over. Okay? One more question, then we have to go to coffee. Uh, could you recommend a one-minute body exercise we oh. can introduce in the postmaster meeting? At the beginning, to make the members feel relaxed and energized. I'll have a think about it. Come on, come on, please. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to go downstairs now to the ground floor to get the coffee, okay? Thank you. Thank you.